All right, let's go over path number one of our Fourier transform. And let's focus on this first part over here where we have our linear circuit and we want to get this transformed circuit. And remember that for Fourier transforms, we don't need any initial conditions because we are studying our circuit into the steady state, no longer in the transient, which is quite different than the Laplace. The Laplace, we use Laplace to study the transient, so the initial conditions were important. You can also use Laplace to study the steady state, but Fourier transform, no need for initial conditions, which is going to make our life a little bit easier compared with the Laplace. All right, so in order to go over this, I'm going to just use an example right away, makes our life easier. We have here a simple resistor connected with a capacitor and our uh, power supply here, it's a step function. And I want to find this frequency domain representation of or my transformed circuit of my time domain circuit. And I'm going to start first with our elements in our circuit, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. For this, we're going to use similar what we use for the Laplace domain, uh, respective conversion of impedances. All right, so this is going to be the representation of your R, C, and L in the frequency domain. R is just going to be the normal R. An L or an inductor will be J omega L, and the capacitor will be one over J omega C. By doing this, now we have Ohm's law in this kind of resistive, in quotes, uh, format. All right, let's do that. R becomes R, C becomes one over J omega C. And now let's focus here on our input. Before in Laplace, a step will be just whatever voltage we had here divided by S. And we kind of stick to that. But now for the frequency domain, we're going to use what it's called the transform pairs, where you have here different types of signals that you can have present on the input of your circuit and the respective Fourier transform. And in our particular case, we have a step function, which is going to be equal to this part over here that you have. All right, cool. So I have the UT, I plug the respective transform pair and I want to find, let's say, the voltage across the capacitor. All right, so that first part here is done. We have our transformed circuit. Now we're going to extract the equation out of our, our transformed circuit. I'm going to have or use a set of tools similar to what we did with Laplace. Because now we are in this frequency domain, Ohm's law is now stated by this equation that you have over here, that the only difference is instead of having R, we have now impedances. But we can use or treat this circuit as a resistive circuit. All right, so then the tools that you can use because it's a resistive circuit, you can treat it as a resistive circuit. You can use any of the tools that you have been learning or using in other applications. Ohm's law, KVL, KCL, equivalent impedance, circuit reduction, source transformation, and then a combination of these leads out to a little bit more complex tools such as MESH, Nodal, Tavnan, Norton, and Superposition. All right, so for this particular um, circuit that we have here, the tool that I'm going to use is a voltage divider. Uh, all elements are in series. I could use KVL, uh, but voltage divider will give me right away the voltage across my capacitor. And if I do that, if you recall, voltage divider gives you the total voltage, which is this part over here, times the resistor of interest, the resistance of interest, which is one over J omega C, divided by the series of these uh, impedances. So I get R plus uh, 1 over j omega c. All right, if I multiply everything by j omega c and I divide everything by rc, you get to this equation over here, which leads to this one. And then if I apply the distributive here, you get this equation that we have over here. And this is the equation that we're going now to use on the next steps.